Good morning, this is Lydia Knox, artist, witch, and astrologer, and I come to you on YouTube once a week to give you uh, some astrological news, what the transits are, how you can work with them to best benefit yourself. I specialize in astrology for artists, uh, astrology for artists and witches uh, alike, and uh, so uh, if you like my uh, little show, uh, please uh, hit like subscribe and feel free to share and comment and i will get back to you uh, as soon as possible in the comment section if i see that you have a question so this is the astrology um, forecast for the week of february 7th to february 13th uh, 2022 so uh we i'm going to start with the big things and talk about the theme of this week so the big alignments are mars uh basically aligns really well with jupiter and pisces mars is in capricorn so it gives us determination it gives us drive it gives us endurance it gives us patience and aligning with jupiter and pisces that means that if we go with the flow if we put our intentions out there and release it and just let the universe take care of the big stuff then we will get to where we need to go. So uh, this is a very magical kind of energy. So it's something to take advantage of during this week, especially if you have some big goals or if you're sending art to juried shows or if you're doing some magical work. Uh, it's always really important to uh, let it go once you, you know, cast the spell and just kind of let the universe take care of it. The more you worry about something, the more you water down the magic and you don't want to do that and the less you'll less likely you'll go with the flow because if you're trying to control everything basically you won't have an idea of where your int intuition is telling you to go so the other uh good um alignment that's happening now is mars again the planet of energy the planet of war the planet of drive the planet of sexuality uh aligns well in a trine with uranus and taurus and again this is a very earthy kind of energy so um uranus and taurus i was kind of uh, comparing to the teutonic uh plate shifting it takes a long time but the change is really dramatic like and before you know it there's like a whole giant change where your whole landscape has totally changed but it happens in increments it happens bit by bit by little earthquakes continuing on and uh, the important thing to do it is that we have the time to adjust to this kind of stuff we have the space to be able to uh change our ways or to think outside the box or to do something in a more innovative manner to adjust to the changes that must happen so we have no choice these are changes that we cannot control right but we can control we can mitigate the damage done by these changes by being more open-minded and flexible about what's going on in our lives right now today so uh yeah that being said here's some more intense stuff that's going on so mercury the lord of communication the lord of our conscious thinking um the traveler from um mount olympus to uh the underworld is in capricorn again strategy making lists being um enduring um thinking productively uh meeting it meets up with pluto the lord of the underworld in in capricorn so this is actually mercury's descent into the underworld really when you think about it by meeting up with uh pluto and uh what's in the underworld there's jewels there's hidden gems there's uh secrets there's deceit there's uh things that we like to cover up and pretend doesn't happen <laughs> there is truth in the underworld right because um you know everything belongs to death when you think about it everything you own belongs to death it does not belong to you because eventually you and I and everybody else will pass from this world onwards and all our things 
will be gone and out of our hands. The, the, um, you know, that is, it is what it is. And I'm sorry to be a little grim, but that's kind of the Mercury's message right now. And also Venus uh, meets up with Mars. So this is Venus and Mars on the same channel. Uh, Venus, love, relationships, art, artistic drive, artistic, um, I would say artistic aesthetics in, in practical Capricorn, which uh, helps us construct or you know work on a long-term project or maybe have a big goal um meets up with mars in capricorn so we'll definitely have the drive to find a solution and our creative powers will be at their maximum so if you're an artist get to work this week just do it if you're finding that you're really stressed or that you're unhappy or you're you're suffering some kind of anxiety because of all the things that are going on. I get it. Um, do know that your art could be an excellent form of therapy to help you mitigate those things that you can't control. So get busy artists. Okay, so we're going to start with Monday. Monday, February 7th. And the moon is waxing crescent. So... The moon on this day meets up with Uranus in Taurus. So the moon is in Taurus and, and that's called a conjunction when the two kind of meet up um, totally and connect. So the moon is our emotional center. It is our, uh, the way we feel. And so it's in, in the practical and earthy sense of Taurus, but with that Uranus influence, uh, it asks us to be, um, to adapt emotionally to the changes that are going on, to use our intuition and um, to be imaginative and adopt new ways of doing things, especially if you're feeling stuck, to uh, follow this mantra, change is good, change is good, change is not bad. <laughs> um renovation so if something's not working uh take it apart build it up again uh take some chances because this is a great time to follow that gut instinct and your intuition which is ruled by the moon and take a chance and if you're if you find you're procrastinating this is a a good energy to end that procrastination and as we canadians say get her done <laughs> Right. Um, the other thing that uh, the moon and Uranus align really well with uh, with uh, Jupiter. So that's the going with the flow energy. That's the you know that's opportunities of luck because they align in in a sextile, which doesn't mean that things come easily, but it does mean that uh, you have opportunities that come knocking at your door that you might want to take advantage of. So this allows us, that really intensifies the good fortune of today. And the more honest you are, the better it is. The more you go with the flow, the better it is. Um, and find enjoyment in just the simple things, right? And be try to be as, as flexible as you can emotionally, because you might find that a little easy to be able to process all the things that are going on. All right. Next day, Tuesday, February the 8th, the moon and the north node and Ceres, the, she's a, that's a kind of dwarf planet, it used to be an, considered an asteroid, but now they, they say it's a planet. Ceres is like Persephone, uh, and she is the god, uh, goddess of uh, grains, of nurturing, of motherhood, of um, nature, and... Uh, the North Node is kind of like our guiding star, our, our, our map to our better selves, to our higher selves. And the moon conjuncting this creates a really feel good kind of day, which is great. And so our imagination is totally enhanced. You'll find that it's, there's a lot of creative energy given to you that day. Your psychic powers are super intense. So great day to read tarot cards or runes or any other divination that you love. Um, 
and follow those gut feelings that you have within yourself. The moon and Ceres all um, are about to go into Gemini, but right now they're in, at the edge of Taurus. So it's a very Taurian energy. So going slow and steady is the way to go still. Um, you'll find that you'll get artistic support from other artists. Um, and it's a very nurturing environment that, that this day, the energy is very nurturing. So and very caring. So it's a great day for self care. It's a great day to work with plants for healing, um, and follow your values and uh, take care of your possessions and the things that you value. All right. Wednesday, February the 9th. All right. The moon shifts over into Gemini. So things get busy and so does Sarah. So, you know, the goddess of, of motherhood and, and, and childbirth and stuff like that has moved into Gemini. So it's more of an intellectual type of mothering, right? You know, the mother that gives their kids curious puzzles or challenges their minds or really encourages their creativity and their curiosity. And so emotionally, we're ready to puzzle things out. We're ready to look at the other side. We're ready to just ask those questions and maybe even poke the bear if we have to. And so just watch that you don't poke the bear too hard because <laughs> that could get you into trouble. And uh, the other interesting aspect that's going on is the sun in Aquarius. So that's... Uh, your essence it's like very funky very out of the box very um innovative very uh, forward thinking aligns with uh lilith dark moon lilith in gemini so there's this trine so it's a very easy flow so this is kind of like the outsider who stands out so the you know don't be afraid to be your authentic self this is a great time to really tune into that and, and be yourself with courage. And uh, how I relate to that is because I'm a witch. And, uh, you know, last year I decided to take my broom out of the broom closet and say, hey, I'm a witch. I practice magic. This is who I am. And I understood that, you know, some people will not like that. <laughs> but it if I don't, if I'm not authentic to who I am, I am lying to myself and everyone about around me. And also my art loses its authenticity, which is a tragedy, right? So this is, so don't be afraid to stand out and not give a shit about what other people think. <laughs> Cause you know, really it's mostly about them. <laughs> I've learned this at the age of 58 heading into my Saturn return. <laughs> For me right now, it's like, oh, it's like a plane diving down into, into the lower stratosphere. It's like, whew. <laughs> Anyways, uh, um, if you're heading to your Saturn return, book an appointment with me. I'll help you navigate it. Uh, okay. Back to the astrology. Um, avoid being judgmental of others that is the thing avoid sarcasm avoid because this this uh this transit also makes it really easy to be sarcastic and mean right because that is the negative side of gemini so um and an aquarius to be arrogant and haughty right you know those so it does have some good things, but it also has some bad points there. And so it creates a kind of dynamic with people who are standing out and being their authentic self and people who are judgmental, judging those people who are standing out and being their authentic self. But you got to go through the fire to, you know, make the jewelry, <laughs> make the, <laughs> make the jewelry. All right. The moon, um, in Gemini also, uh, aligns with Juno which is now an Aquarius. So this is again, a Gemini Aquarius kind of energy. And this creates emotional independence. Juno is partnerships. It's uh, our connections to other people, our, our deeply emotional attachments. And being an Aquarius, it kind of gives us a, a chance to kind of say, hmm, maybe I need a little bit of space right now. 
Uh, I need a little bit of more freedom. It's not a good time to commit. So all those who who want to get engaged and ask their partner if they'll get marry them, I would not do it on February 9th because <laughs> they might not say yes, right? So, um, but it, it's, uh, it's a good time for, um, you know, for just celebrating your own independence in a relationship, right? Because it's two different people getting along, but even in uh, the best of relationships, you still need your own space, your own room, as Virginia Woolf would say. Okay, and next we have February 10th, Thursday, Thor's Day. I always love that Thor's Day. <sighs> Anyways, um, Pluto and Mercury meet up. And this is what I've been talking about. This is when they directly conjunct so they join together to make one force and and uh so mercury travels into the un underworld and uh this is a good time to work on your shadow self to understand some secrets that you have been avoiding to um yeah and and new information will be coming your way like in the form of a revelation and the death of the old ways is going to be like, like the old ways are gone. This is, you have to kind of reestablish a new kind of game plan. Um, think of it like a sports team that's been uh, losing and losing and losing. And then they finally uh, lose. Uh, they finally get to this one game where they, where they need to win or else they won't get into the playoffs. So the coach suddenly comes up and, and gives them, a speech that gives them the rotten truth about what they need to change to be able to survive and thrive moving forward. This is the kind of energy that Thursday has. So be aware of that, right? The moon will continue in Gemini and it in conjuncts. So it forms a, a, a really awkward alignment with uh, Venus and Mars in Capricorn. So um this is a good time to think about pausing before reacting we will be emotionally volatile around this time so refrain from um saying that sarcastic comment uh of, of refrain from getting into a fight on social media uh there's easily misconceptions that will come up and uh uh, manipulations by other people so make sure that you stay out of the fray so you can stay zen and calm and uh, the good thing you can get from Gemini is if you do that you will see both sides of the story you won't just see one side and by staying out of the fray for just a day and giving yourself a pause you give yourself the gift of staying calm while things get crazy <laughs> Friday <laughs> Speaking of things going crazy, the moon all day long is void, of course, in Gemini until 6.27 p.m. So whenever the moon is void, of course, do not sign any contracts. Don't move forward at anything. Uh, emotionally, we're kind of in this emotional mercury retrograde where things where we can be very indecisive we don't know what the fuck we need to do we're uh swinging back and forth between extremes and the moon in conjunct so it ends up in a another awkward alignment with pluto and mercury meeting up in capricorn so this is this is uh yeah this uh, this could create intense encounters People's obsessions get intensified. Old stuck issues could come up. Um, you're kind of going to feel like a mouse in the maze going around and around trying to figure your way through or, uh, you know, and afraid of the Minotaur, <laughs> Pluto and Mercury together as one. Uh, they are somewhere in the maze confronting you. Um, so write down and face your fears. That is your homework for today come to terms with what your fears are and understand how they affect you.
Fear is a good instinct, but out of control, it can make us freeze. It can make us uh, turn to addictions. It could, you know, it can cause a lot of harm. So it's good to try and find your courage within you. Saturday, the moon, February 12th, the moon moves into loving and nurturing cancer. And boy, do we need it there. So the moon is happy and at home in cancer. And not only that, it aligns with Pisces and Jupiter and Pisces. So there's a real go with the flow and find your fortune and, uh, and you know, feel really good and feeling emotional healing. And boy, do we really need it, right? And the moon um, aligns well with Uranus and Taurus. That's that, that, that slow, sh steady shift to change. But because of that, we, we, we are encouraged to follow our gut feelings. We're encouraged to find innovative answers. Uh, yeah, make sure you get creative because uh, this weekend is the weekend coming up has a lot of creative energy for for artists out there. And Sunday, February 13th, the moon continues in Cancer and trines with Neptune. So Neptune, the Lord of vision, the Lord of magic, the Lord of creativity in Pisces, happy, creative, uh, wonderful energy. And uh, this... Um, energy uh um the moon will oppose venus and mars but uh because there will be a sextile between venus and mars and neptune uh we have an extra need to get busy with our art and to um comfort ourselves and maybe practice some more art therapy for me it's going to be more landscape so i wanted to show you one of the art pieces that i finished so I've been just doing landscapes, uh, these expressive landscapes, and this is a quarter moon, which is what we are going through right now. And uh, the cloud looks like a wolf coming down and through the sky. So this is, uh, this is uh, a new piece that I've just completed. I'm still waiting for it to dry. I'm gonna be uh, busy working on my art. And uh, as you've seen, I've been really working on that painting and trying to get it done. So uh, with that, I'm going to say, oh, I wanted to give you a magic lesson. Right. So if you're dealing with stressful noises, Canadians out there uh, and Americans, uh, and your neighbor is uh, uh, harassing you by being very loud and noisy, here's a magical spell for you. So take a jar and go to the place where it's noisy and uh, ask the invisibles to silence the noise and leave the jar upside down. And then if you have to do it three times, that's good. Um, if you can write a poem, that's even better to do it or and light a candle beside it if you need an extra boost. But put your energy and your magic into that spell to silence the noisemaker so that uh, they won't disturb you anymore. All right, with that, I'm going to say stay creative, stay magical, and I will see you next Monday. Take care.